everyone I want to hear everybody from the choir stand down to the last person in this church please give God a name mm. give God a name give God a name just give him a name can I hear you please give him a name Can somebody give him a name? Thank you, Lord. Yes, Bube. See how far you brought me. Just give him a name. Yes, Bube. I'm so glad you find me worthy, Lord. I can see, I can tell, all I know is your grace on my name. I will see your praise. Opagi kumnaka, when you so kuchi hanaka. Can you just give him a name, please? In a zumbi kachuru. Give him a name. Give him a name. Just give him a name. Give him a name. Listen, the songwriter says, What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and adore Him. Angels bow before Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. God, we say, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, I expect you to praise him, I expect you to praise him, I expect you to praise him, heaven and earth are born, and just born before Can I hear you sing it with confidence? What a mighty God we serve As holy living God What a mighty God we serve We serve Heaven and honor Before he what a mighty God we serve. Can I hear you say it with confidence? Oh, God. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus is America. What a mighty God we serve. We serve. 
Father, we thank you. You are God above all gods. He is king above all kings. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. He is the pillar of fire. He is the pillar of cloud. What he says he will do, that is what he will do. Tonight, may he receive all our praise. May he receive all the adoration. He deserves to be celebrated. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Receive all our prayers through Christ our Lord. That may a man is too weak for me. Do something and have your seat. God is good. God is good. And all the time, I think let me give you a testimony. <laughs> Hello. So for the past few weeks, I've been noticing that each time we put on our genset when there is no light, I will always notice this light is just fluctuating. So last week, last week Monday, I told our electrician to come around and let's recheck all the wires. I believe there must be a bridge in our wiring system. Maybe there's a wire that is burnt somewhere. So we did everything. We went around checked all the wires, corrected everything, and he told me, I think I've discovered one fault somewhere, I've corrected it, and I think we shouldn't have the problem again. On Tuesday evening, I was with a praise team in the, in the evening, we were together having a meeting, and then, as I went back to my room, I found my room in smoke. Nobody knew anything was going on in that room. The room was in smoke. So initially I thought it was the air condition that started up anything. I went close to the air condition and I didn't see anything. So I was asking myself, so I called one of my boys and I said, this room is in smoke. I don't even know where the fire is coming from. Lo and behold, just where I had all the connections behind my gadgets in the sitting room, there was a fire that had already started, died, and the second one was starting off again. If that fire had escalated, if that fire had escalated, the things I have around that side, it will have been a different story. I entered the room just when the second fire was starting all over again. I just told God, you are my protector. I just told God, 
you are the one that protects me. Because at the end of the day, that before we would have realized that the fire had burned, I mean, something was happening. I had books. I had a book of shelves. My, my, my shelf for my books is just around where that fire had started. So it only needed one book to start burning. And then it will connect. The way my room is connected, we are a family, plus the chair, plus the books. There's a way I've arranged it so that everything is collected. But I thank God nothing happened. We were able to quench it. He will do your own for you. When you are not there on your business ground, he will do it for you. When you are not there on family grounds, he will do it for you. No matter the plan of the enemy, the Lord is still our protector. No matter everything we are ignorant about, we don't know where it's coming from, God knows where it's coming from and he will take care of it for us. In the name of Jesus. First Kings chapter 3. We'll read from verse 16 to 22. What did the scripture say? Let's read that together. Came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, My Lord, this woman and I lived in the same house. I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had her baby. There was no one in the room, in the house. Okay? During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. And took my son from my side while I was asleep. She put him by his breast and the next morning I got up to nurse my son. He was dead. But let's read that again. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, No, the living one is my son. The dead one is. But the first one insisted, No, the dead one is yours. The living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. Please go back to verse 19 and let's read that all of us together. Verse 19. During the night, this woman's son died because she did what? Because she did what? Because she did what? I pray for you today that whatever is in your hands that is about to die, may God save you in the name of Jesus. May God save it from in the name of Jesus. Let life come back to it in the name of Jesus. This morning, I want to talk to you about don't let it die. Don't let it what? Die. You see, in life, I've come to a point when I hear people say, life has not been fair to me. Or, I have never gotten opportunity of life in life. Or that things are not working well. Initially, I would be a little bit emotional to say, Oh, why has life not been fair to this one? This one, why has life not allowed this one to have a job? Why has this one not been able to get what other people are getting? But gradually, the more I dig into people's lives and check the reason they are where they are today, I came to discover that 80% of us, 
We are the killers of everything that God gave to us. You allowed something to die in your life. The suffering or the pain you are going through right now, the loss that you are going through right now, the regret about I lost something, you, you as a person allowed it to what? To die. Are you with me? The scripture said that these two women, they were prostitutes, maybe temple prostitutes as it was in those days. The problem was not about their life. The problem or the challenge was not about them being prostitutes. But it was that this particular person, the scripture said she gave birth to a baby. Three days later, the other person also did what? They delivered. So life was good for me. Life was good for you. There is no reason to say, ah, see her, she is proud because she has what? A baby. No. There was no reason to begin to look at the other person and feel envy that God did it for her. He did not do it for me. Does somebody understand where we are now? Then, the scripture said, the two of them were in the same house. Said nobody was with them. So there is nobody to accuse. There was nobody to blame. There was nobody to say, I am sure it was this man or this woman. There was nobody that had access to that room. It was just the two of them. The scripture told us that while they were sleeping, what happened to the one that lost the baby? What did she do? She lay on. You know, it is one thing to give birth to a child. It is another thing to be skillful enough to have the skill of sleeping with a baby on the same bed. Am I making sense? You see, all the while, when you were growing up, you will sleep from North Pole and wake up in the South Pole. Your mother will spank you and say, this is not how to what? To sleep. Some of us will sleep from East. We will roll to the West. That is why when there is no electricity, it is dangerous to wake up in a dark room. Because some of us who sleep on big beds, you slept from the east, but they found you in the north. Where you thought you would normally wake up to walk has become a wall because you are in the north pole. Hello. Those of you in that group say hi. And then, your, 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 your father or your mother will keep telling you this is not how to what? To sleep. In that manner, you are being taught that you need a skill of sleeping on the bed. Because even when we are asleep, we are not totally unconscious, right? Somehow, our subconscious mind is still awake. That is why when somebody steps into the room, some of us are alert enough to wake up because somehow you are able to still feel or to still get a sense that something is going on. Apart from sleeping, you would realize that there are so many things that growing up, a responsible father or mother begins to teach you very quickly. Some of them are not taught in school. Some of them are taught in school. These days, a lot of schools are beginning to enter into sex education and everything. And you discover that it's because they know that at home, as many of you are here, and as you, are, you have continued the way the, the way the legacy was handed over to you, you've never taught your children about sex education. They only learn it outside. And then you blame them for becoming pregnant outside. You have never sat your daughter down to tell your daughter, I want to tell you what happens during this stage. At the time when you are having your menstruations or you are having your period, this is what will happen. This is the emotions that will happen. These are the kind of feelings you will have. None of us have taught our daughters, but when they get pregnant, you blame them. A blind man 
leading. Clap for yourself. Hello. Are you getting what we are trying to say? A lot of us have never been able to do that. That at the certain stage, when, 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 when they look at their life and there are changes in their life, in their growth rate, you are not able to sit your son or your daughter to say, when you get to this stage of life, always follow this road. It is normal for this to happen. It is normal for this to happen. But don't be afraid. If you follow this road, nothing will happen to you. The highest you will be shouting. If you get pregnant and come to this house, I will throw you out. After you have thrown them out, they became successful and they abandoned you. They learned it on the street. What they should have learned from you. And so you will see that even parents will tell you as a lady, this is not how to sit. Is that not so? As a lady, this is not how to talk to a man. Is that not so? As a man, they will tell you this is not how to handle a woman. If you keep going this way, you will fail. Why is this thing, or why are these lectures being given every now and then? It is that so that the day something will be given to you, something very important, this thing that you are not learning now can kill it. Am I talking to somebody now? This thing that they are trying to tell you, that you don't just go out in the public, you don't just go out or to talk like this, to move like this, to dress like this, to act like this, it can kill something that is very important to your life. And as at that time, you can be told it is too late. You can be told, ah, you have to go back. See, when there is life, there is what? When there is life, there is what? But you know, if at the age of 60, that is when you want to go and write your high school final exam, Wayek. I know there is hope, but sister, but brother, you have plenty of things to deal with. Because as you are wearing that uniform to enter the class, all the children will be like, where was she when her mate crossed this bridge? Where was he when his mate did what? Crossed this bridge. You, 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 there is a place you go to, you are strange. You look strange. Not because there is no hope, but mm, brother, you want to write Wayek at the age of 60. Is there a job application? Even with a job application, that is why you see some people right now, they use other people's results to work. They fo they, since it is photocopy, I worked in a photocopy center. I did not, I've never told you that secret. Say, put a white paper. No, so I do you put a white paper, then you, 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 you photocopy it and re photocopy it. So when they see it, since photocopy, I used to have marks anyhow, they will now assume that it's the photocopy of what? Of your original document. Then the, the day they now say, Madam, we seem to have lost your document, or we are doing verification. Bring your original document. You will now say, Criminals entered our house. They took the box. Eh? The box that has all the documents in my family. My dear friends, she lay on him because as at that day, she did not have the skill of sleeping with a baby on the bed. Therefore, she allowed her baby to die. Some of us today, a lot of things are dead. Nobody entered. There was no demon that entered. There was nobody that stepped in. There was no altar that was working against your life as at that time. What killed it is that you have allowed it to die because you did not train yourself. 
The scripture told us about a man called Gehazi. The scripture told us that Gehazi was a servant of who? Of Elisha. Please get me that scripture. And the scripture told us that, you know, when Naaman came, what happened? The scripture said they went, Naaman was healed. Then what happened? The scripture said when Gehazi came to the hill, he took the things from the what? From the servant. That is after going to tell Naaman that uh, what? My master said you should give him the gift. And what the scripture said? He said put them away in the house. He was hiding it. He sent the men away and they did what? They left. They thought it was his master that sent him. Next verse. Then he went in and stood before his master, Elisha. What was the question? Let's read that together. He said, where have you been, Gehazi? Elisha asked. Your servant didn't do what? And then he said, but Elisha said to him, was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money or to accept clothes, olive groves, vineyards, flocks, heads, or men servants and maid servants? Well, next verse. Naman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence and he was leprous as white as... Let me break this down for you. When it comes to positions of life. Some of us are not thanking God that you have access to people you shouldn't have even have access to. The scripture said this guy was a servant. That means just as Elisha received a mantle from who? From Elijah. Who is the next in command? As Elisha will be going away. Who is the next person? Gehazi will rise. He was in the place and the seat of honor. Just all they were trying to do to him is train up a child in the way so that when he grows, his master did not collect anything from Naaman. Greediness. Big eye, as we say. How can this thing come? My master is foolish. He ran to collect it. When his master asked him, he first acted that he was smart. He said, I didn't go anywhere now. Me. I didn't go anywhere. And Elisha told him, my spirit was with you. And then he asked him a very important question. Is this the time to collect money? Are you seeing it now? A lot of us today, what has killed you? What has killed your business? What has killed your relationship? What has killed everything is that you don't know the time to collect and you don't know the time to say I'm not collecting. Hello? Am I communicating to somebody? You don't know when to be generous. You don't know when to demand. Elisha told him, you have missed it. This is not the time to start collecting things. You know, in church, we have what we call voluntary services. Abby? That is why when you become a church warder or an usher, you voluntarily did what? I want to do this job. If you come back and say, church, you know they pay me, you are in the wrong place. Hello? Am I making sense now? Can I shake that table a little bit? You are the one who joined choir voluntarily. I want to sing for what? Why are you upset that the church did not pay you? The thing that you are doing in church, if you are the one who brought yourself forward and said, I want to do it, why are you looking for money? Because there are places people will go and they will do what? They will pay them. So whatever that institution has to offer you, it will be their own discretion to say, we want to do this. It is not an entitlement to you. It is from the institution that they have charity to do what? To do it. Because some of you, 
you will still jump from one church to another, and you will still realize that if it is church to pay you to prosper, you go there poor like church rat. Am I making sense to somebody? So you don't understand the point of sacrifice. You don't understand that the point where you are being trained for greater heights of life. So that when you become great in the future, and you go to a place, and they did not give you anything, you will not be offended. St. Paul says, I know what it means to have food, and not to, have, not to have food. I have been trained. There are ministers today that will go for ministration. They will first give you the bill to pay them. You know that? Don't pay them and see. They will tell you, before I step your church, you have to pay this amount of money. Ah, you know you can't even try it here. As, you are try, as I'm hearing it, I'll tell you, Oga, we'll see you later. Or they, if I want to do it very well, I will let you come. I will still tell you, let me preach first. You know why? Because when God gives you this training, he knows that at a certain time of life, there are places that will not give you what is equal to the value of what you are giving out. He becomes your eternal reward. He becomes your what? Your eternal reward. If you carry food to go and give to somebody that does not have food, and you came back complaining, who is going to reward you? Most of the things that God will ask you to do, they are mostly places where people might never be able to do what? To reward you. So he becomes your what? Your reward. And when God becomes your reward, it means that this is how you will move to a place where you also know nobody and people will rise to do what? To bless you. Somebody once asked me, if, Father, there are times that I have noticed that in some places we struggle, we don't have money, and you even beg people, come and contribute, they don't have money, and they will not respond. I say you are giving yourself stress. As you see me so, I know the stress. If the money finish, they say it's whose work? It's the work of who? Oga, there's no money. We want to buy speaker. Simple and what? He said to the Pharisees, if these people don't praise me, I will raise up stones to do what? As a priest, I have come to discover if my blessing does not come from where I'm walking, somebody out there, God will open his eyes. He will see how much I am what, what I am doing. And he will say, ah, from afar. I see the way that man is laboring. Let me be a blessing to him. That is why God is your eternal reward. In sorrow is my comfort. In trouble is my stay. He tells me every care on him. Care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley. The bright and the morning star is the fairest of the thousands in the soul. When God tells you, trust in me, hope in me, do not depend on man, he knew that at a certain time, your reward, he is the one that uses men to bless you. That is why they say, if a man's way pleases the Lord, even his enemies will be what? At peace with him. Your enemy will still fight for you. Your enemies will still do things for you. In the counsel of the wicked, an enemy will still stand up and say, I know that I don't like the man, but I think in this one, let us leave the man alone. Why? Because God is your reward. A lot of us are like Gehazi. You think you are smart. They will give you a contract to do. You will not do it well. You will use useless materials. Then you will come back to church and testify that the Lord blessed you. The government gave me a housing estate to build. When I built it, I finish. But in that housing estate, it is rubbish. Ah! Somebody gave me a work to do. I did it. I gained a lot. But when we check the quality of the work that you have done, it is what? It is rubbish. When you look at you, 
people came to buy things from your hand. You lied to them and told them that was the original. When they left, you started laughing with your, 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 your fellow men on the street and saying, you know what, I deceived the guy. He thought that was the original. I sold the fake one. For what? For the original. You are happy that you got something that will soon finish in the next three minutes. You are excited that you exploited. And after you have finished exploiting, you are celebrating. I thank God. You thank which of the God? Mammon. The God of what? Of money. A lot of us are here today. Your customer satisfaction is not a priority to you. If your customer comes and tells you, I am not happy with the product you have given to me, a lot of us does not understand what they call the win-win situation. If this man is unhappy, he represents a generation. Forever, wherever he goes to, he will keep telling them, don't go to that store. Don't go to that store. That man will cheat you. Even when you come back and tell him that the product has a problem, that man will cheat you. That man will cheat you. And then you will not know how many people he knows. And yet, you will be fasting, and the fasting will give you ulcer, and you still, you will not get the result. Oh God, open doors for me. Yet, you allowed your customer to die. Because you have not learned the skill, the act, the way of keeping alive what was given to you. Am I talking to somebody today? I have come to a point where I have told myself God is not wicked and he answers prayers. He said that he's talking and I'm not hearing and, and I'm not listening. Or he gave me a direction that I refuse to follow. He said I have never seen the children of the righteous begging for bread. I have come to that point. When you don't have, he will provide. But the most important thing is that do you know how to keep it alive? Gehazi lost what it was coming in front to be a great prophet. We would have been shouting, Prophet Gehazi, these were the miracles he performed. How we allow things to die and we are what? We are complaining. A lot of us represent Gehazi. When marriage will touch your hand, it will die. Business will touch your hand. It will die. God will give you a relationship that others are struggling to get. You will let it to do what? To die. Yet, in that Pandora box of what was given to you is the answer to anything that was supposed to make you stop crying every day of your life. The fears that you share today that, you, that, that comes out of your eyes it's coming from the point of view that from the point that sometimes what was given to you, you allow it to die. And if your seed dies, how will you harvest in the day where hunger is about to hit? Where hunger is about to hit the town? What have you allowed? What have you slept over? What have you laid on? That is what? That is now dead. You see, in Matthew chapter 25, we are told about the parable of the talent. You remember? The scripture said, the master asked. Say what? Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So what happened? So I was afraid. And what? And what? I can't hear you. I went out and hid your talent in the what? In the ground. He says, see, here is what belongs to you. Next verse. His master replied and said what? You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew I have vested where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Hello. Well then. You should have put my money on deposit with what? With the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Look at me. Look at me. This man had access to a man that can give him capital. Abby? In fact, they were his servants. 
So he's training them for business, training them to be able to do what they needed to do in life. He gave them. He looked at this one and said, no, you, you can handle five. You, two. You take one. The scripture said, they all went. The other two came back and said, sir, after all the challenges in, on business grounds, this is what I gained again. This one was offended that his master reaps where he has not worked So, Let me give you a warning of life. Stop comparing your life with somebody that you think has made it and feel that God is cheating you because you think now he is enjoying and you, you are suffering. A lot of us steal from others. A lot, of, a lot of us envy people that you have not seen how much they suffer to get to where they are today. You only get angry and beef them and, and look at them like, ah, he's, he's getting everything. That is why I stole from him. He looked at his master. From the statement he made, it was like he's getting everything. Comfortable life. What he did not see is he did not know the plan of the master for his life. And because of that, he blew away a relationship that should have saved him. From what? In the scriptures, the scripture said, the master said, throw him out to the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, where he will suffer. What have you allowed in your life to die? This man had access. A lot of people must have been envying that man. Hey, look at the rich man. And yeah, look at the servant. He, this one, when he's even traveling, he will give his, his servants money. Our own does not treat us like that. This man had access to what can happen. Sometimes you are blinded by what you want to get now. Forgetting that tomorrow... You may be closing a door you will never be able to open. Some of us today that you are praying for God to open doors for you. If I check your life, there was a relationship that you scattered. There was a business opportunity that you blew up. If I look into your life very well today, there was an instruction from God that God told you, do this thing no matter how. Keep doing it. You blew it. And you are back to the place where you are not supposed to be. A 60-year-old man trying to write a high school exam. Because when it was the time to write exam with his mate, he did not write. He was careless. He laid over whatever was given to him and it died. All these ones they are telling you, adjust yourself. You say you are a slave queen. You will slay yourself and then... God will give you a good husband. You will kill him. There are, you must study the nature of what was given to you in life. What did I say? Study the nature of what was given to you in life. You may not know why I pray seriously for my priesthood. Some years ago, I met an elderly man. He was a father to me. So each time I was having issues, or I had something I wanted to share with him. Since my father is not alive, I would call him and say, Daddy, I want to talk to you. One day, I told him, I feel like leaving this, this thing, priesthood thing. I, I feel like I don't want disturbance in my life. I want to go back to the thing I want to do. There was a word he used for me, a sentence. Till date, each time I remember how it came out of his mouth, I tremble. He said to me, let me tell you this. Some things are like egg. If it breaks, it is broken. I said, huh? He said, let me tell you. Some things are like what? Egg. If it breaks, it's what? It's broken. He says, so whatever God gave you, hold it. Don't let it break. What I'm telling you now is over 15 years. I sat down.
down. And I was like, if it breaks, it's what? It's broken. See, I know God is the God of the second chance, but the first one will pay you. God is what? He's the God of what? The second chance, the third chance, the fourth. He, it will pay you, but the scar, the wound, the, the, that thing that is scattered, that thing that you allowed it to die, you will keep seeing the signpost. The only thing is that God is a wounded healer. Does somebody understand what I am saying? We are still in the, in the, in the, in the Easter celebration. We are celebrating that Jesus has resurrected. Let me tell you, the scripture says, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains what? A single grain. But don't confuse that scripture. It is true that some things must die. But whatever must die must be something that has life inside it to come back. The, the death of Jesus was not made the news to be great. What made the news to be great was the resurrection. Because if he had remained in the grave when he died, what was happening to the disciples? The two that were going on Emmaus Road, they were busy complaining. Ah, he died, he died. What was happening to Mary Magdalene? He died, he died. Why were the disciples hiding in the room? He died, he died. There was depression everywhere. Anytime you kill whatever was given to you, it is depression. You can wake up and say, I know it shall be well. Brother, until it is well, there is no celebration. He said that there is light or no light. Until it wakes up. So we are not celebrating Jesus just because he died. The reason the news is louder, the testimony is louder, is that he is living. He lives to die no more. They went to the grave. Where they should have been sad, they didn't find him there. Ah, he's alive. That means whatever you allow to die will only bring you pain and sadness. Will only bring you pain and sorrow. What is it that God gave to you today? Others are still praying that your masters should settle down. You were settled, but you are allowing it to die. Others are still praying that they should give birth to children. You give birth to children, you are allowing them to die. They die in decay. They don't come to church. They don't, they, they, you, you don't know how to push them to be alive. People are praying to get married. God gives you a husband. You allow it to do what? To die. There are some of us here today. Your child can go and do Yahoo. You don't care. As long as he's bringing money home. Then one day, you say, God, we punish anybody that killed him. You are confused. Oh. You are drunk. A man that swindled people. Collected people's money. You are saying, God, we punish you. God has just started dealing with you that collected the money and knew that he was doing something wrong and you didn't tell him. A lot of us have killed so many things. You have allowed it to die. That is why Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The angel told them in Matthew 20, he said, he is risen as he said he would. So the reason for the celebration this season is that he did not die. He is alive. He was raised. He is what? So, by the time we move around, we are not celebrating our Jesus died. Our Jesus died. We say our Jesus died and resurrected. See, I don't know what God gave to you. But you see, if it takes me fighting the devil, fighting any human person that wants to kill, that wants to destroy, that wants to steal that thing that God gave to me. I will do it. Because the thief come here to do what? To steal, to kill, and to what? To destroy. What are you doing to keep that thing alive? The scripture told us, I think 2 Timothy 2.18, right? Stop it to show thyself. Approve. As a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of what? Of truth. What is it that you are studying to make sure that it's not just I have a testimony, but I know how to keep a wife. I know how to keep a husband. 
I know how to keep a business. I know how to keep a relationship. I know how to... What is it that you are studying? See, if you don't, there are people who have written their stories all over and all over. They've said it on social media. They've, read, they've written it in books so that you will learn from them. The scripture told us that not all the miracles that Jesus did was written. But this one was written so that you will believe that he's what? He is the Lord. He is the Messiah. This thing that people write to tell you, people will tell you half of their story and tell you this is how my marriage failed. This is how I lost a good man. This is how I lost a good relationship. This is how I lost a customer. I See, there are people who have lost customers in this world. The only thing that made you to lose that customer is just because of your dishonesty. The man discovered that you have been cheating him and now the tap that was open for you became closed. You lost him. The mo see, I can relate to that because there are customers, there are people that have lost me on, on business ground. I didn't even tell them I was leaving. I only discovered that they were a cheat and I walked away quietly. Quietly. There was dishonesty. They will collect money. They will tell you, today they will tell you this, uh, the, this thing is bad. You will, you will spoil it again and tell the man, bring the money. I will discover another problem. The 6,000, the 10,000 you are collecting, you think it was feeding you. What you did not know was that the man was already saying, if this man finished, I have noticed that he has small children. I will help one of his child. Because of your dishonesty, they did what? It's closed. And yet you will be in church. Oh Lord, open doors. Year of manifestation. He gave you manifestation. You allowed it to die. Does somebody relate to what I'm talking about? Go through the list of your life. Any angle where you are having problems today. And ask yourself, was there a time I allowed something to die? See, when Jesus wanted to choose his disciples, he was very clear. He knew those that we kill his ministry, two of us. The Pharisees were not supporting him because they felt that they said he is now healing people. People will believe in him. That's their problem. But if Jesus was with the Pharisees and he was doing, they would say he's a good man. People are now recognizing us. We told them that we are the lawmakers. We told them that we are this, we are that. People will have been celebrating him. But because he chose fishermen, people who are nothing, they said he is a bad man. He deserves to die. In this world, when you are born, people are ready that you should die. People are ready that what? Hell will not spare you that you are born until you what? You die. There are people who like to kill other people's own because their own is dead. That was what the woman, the woman did. Ah, my own is dead. Instead of facing the truth to say, the reason my business went down today Oh my God. Do we still have time to preach? <laughs> Say, the reason my business died today, I was dishonest to customers. I was not faithful to them. I had relationships with people that I, I, I should not have scattered. Instead of telling yourself the truth, you will look for how to kill another one. That was what the woman did. Say, no, let us cut the baby into two. She's saying it's not my child. If it was truly her child, we should have agreed to cut the baby. No. The owner of the child said, give it to her. Give it to her. My joy is to see that this baby lives. When death has happened to you, the problem is not, see, the problem is not having death. The problem is managing the situations of death. The scripture said that Joseph of Arimathea had the tomb that was left. He said, get his body. Don't let it rust. We are on the cross. Because there were two things. The scripture had told them in Deuteronomy. And said that nobody, a criminal that was hanged on the tree, should not be left there. So the Sabbath is coming. For the Jewish people, they needed to remove the body of Jesus. The reason they had to say Pilate gave permission so that his body can be taken down. It's because for the Roman soldiers, they, will, they don't care. They will leave that body to decay on that cross as a sign of warning for others. In the moment of death, a man said, no, give us the body, sir. Can you pay? Yes, we can pay. Give us the body. And kept it in a tomb, waiting for life to come back. Because this seed that went on the ground, on the ground has life in it. There are times that there are things you have to keep. 
Because in the eyes of others, it is dead. In the eyes of others, it has failed. But if God tells you, hold it, hold it. Even if your husband is telling you you are stupid, hold it. Even if your husband is telling you that you are useless, hold it. It is because he's telling you that in the physical world, he looks like a dead man. There is still life in that marriage. Don't lose it. Hello. Am I communicating to somebody this morning? There are things he tells you. You are getting mad. He tells you for this particular one, don't separate. Don't move. Hold it. Your customer comes. He looks as if your customer was angry. He tells you, return back my money. And God tells you, hold the relationship. Give him back his money. Don't let him go. Hold it. There is still life in that customer. Some of us have lost it. That is why you cannot help other people's children. Because you don't see life. What you see is death. Then at a certain point, you rise and discover that what you thought was dead on the third day, that thing is being brought back to life. See, wisdom is needed in this world to know when to throw, to know when to maintain, to know when to kneel, to know when to stand, to know when to say I'm sincerely and deeply sorry, and to know when to keep quiet, to know when to speak, and to know when not to speak, to know what to fight and what not to fight. Wisdom is needed. That is why the spirit that lives in you is called the spirit of wisdom. He said, don't be afraid of what, king, what you will say before kings because he will, they will tell you. He said, the spirit, my father will tell you through his spirit what you will say before them. Inspirations will hit you. A lot of young people are poor today. All the things are happening to them because when God whispered and said, my son, move in this direction, start this thing, you allow the idea to die. See, I think I have once shared with you how I started my media life. I finished my last exam in school. There was no more exam. There was no more test. The only thing I was waiting for was to come home and to be ordained and sent for mission. I was in my room. I will never forget that morning, April 23rd, 20, 2015. I said, what next? Yes, I will be ordained. What next? And then I heard the still small voice. Start sending homilies to your friends who cannot attend morning mass. That is why you see all my energy has been concentrated on my media life, through of us. I buy any gadget. I, I traveled of recent, I still bought another one. I buy gadgets because the instruction from April 23rd said there are people who will not have enough time to sit in church because of the nature of their job, because of the nature of anything. If you envy me now, you are wasting your time because when I heard that instruction I kept to it and I was spending my money to do every single thing, I didn't know I would meet the number of people I meet today in different parts of the world I talk to people who I have never seen and yet when you hear us talking on the phone you think that we have seen ourselves I mean there are things that people send from outside the country down to this ground for the sake of what? because they heard a man what was the direction for the growth? Start sending homily to what? To people, your friends, who cannot attend morning mass because they have to rush to work in the morning so that they can have something to do what? To listen to. Even if this church does not open, you were not the ones that I was sent to physically. I was told the people I will meet, they are online. They use their phones. They use their gadgets. They will do what? So whether you are three for Monday prayer, whether you are two for Monday prayer, the instruction is what? My, see, when you understand divine direction, you will understand the foolishness of men. You can wake up and say, I don't like him. I will not attend Monday prayer. I they have hurt him. You know me before. Am I communicating to somebody? The instruction was not to you. There are people who cannot attend. I call them my online parishioners. That is why I am very particular about them. I know people who have called me in the past. They said, hello, please, I want to speak to Father Anthony. They thought that the number they saw on the screen was the secretary's number. I said, yes, this is Father Anthony. I remember somebody said, ah, Father, you are the one. Are you Father Anthony? Say yes. 
Say, I'm shocked. I say, why are you shocked? Say, I thought someone else would pick the phone and we say, okay, you want to talk to Father Anthony? You will wait. You are... How did they give that number, sir? You are number what? You are number 100. Yeah, you are personal PA. Madam, you have to buy yeah, Jota. You have to buy oil. Yeah, you, you do that. And then there's consultation fee. And uh, what other fee do you pay? What other fee do you pay now? Consultation fee and what? And you add everything together. I pick my phone myself. Because the instruction from April 23rd was what? There are people who will not have time to sit as you and I are sitting here. But they need to hear what will keep them going. Attend to them. So I am not confused about people I need to attend to. What did you sleep over? What did you carelessly sleep over that is dying today or that is dead? This is when you will now tell the Lord of the resurrection and say, please wake it up for me. I know I was careless. Please wake it up for me. Be on your feet. Because he lives. Very quickly. Because he lives. It's time to really get down. You, are, you don't have time to pray, so we are going to pray short. I want you to enter into the spirit of prayer. Because I know. And tell God I brought my life this morning. He holds my fear. He holds my future. My life is one. I live in just because he lives. Oh, because he lives. Because he lives. Oh, because he lives. I am a Praise tomorrow I know my Savior leave Of fear is gone Oh, of fear is gone Because I know hey, He holds my view He holds my future My life is what I live in trust To him, I say, Father, I killed it. It was my fault. I killed it. I killed it. If my marriage is not working today, oh God, I killed it. Please, I am begging you. Can somebody pray and tell the most high? If my business is not moving forward today, I killed it. If my boss does not like me in my place of work, I was the one that killed the relationship because I started cheating my boss. I started cheating somebody I should not cheat. I started doing things. I was dishonest, a dishonest servant. Please, God of the resurrection, oh Jesus, wake it up for me. Wake it up. Oh God of the second chance, I came this morning to say I acknowledge myself. Wake it up for me. My pride killed it. My pride killed it. My dishonesty killed it. That is what has killed my children. I was careless with them. I was careless with my daughter. I was careless with my son. It died. They died. Oh God, please, I ask you for help. He holds my peace. Can somebody pray and say, God, please? Lift up those those hands. Tell him, Tell him save me. Tell him to please save me. Because he oh, Savior. Lift up your hands to the heavens. Savior. Oh, Savior. Oh, Savior. Oh, Savior. Oh, oh, Lord, my humble cry. And why on all the stars why not tell God as I lift up my hands break the chains of the slavery I put in my I put myself into that situation I put myself into I am now asking you to save me please save me I am the one that is that has cost if, I, if the devil has access to my family today I did it myself I cost it myself please save me please save me Oh God, my pride, I could not say I'm sorry. I could not say forgive me. I could not sincerely change. That was what has caused me this problem. I lift up my hands to the heaven. I said, save me. Save me, save me. Save me, save me. Save me. 
This is the season. Tell God, please. My marriage, my life, people you have sent into my life. Please, I beg you. Oh, restore to me. Can I see somebody praying and talking to God? This thing that is dead, I need it to be alive. I need it to be alive. Ah, oh. You see, God gave Adam and Eve a garden. But we also know that there are spirits that gives you a wrong knowledge. The serpent told her, eat it, don't worry. That was how she killed it. We are going to pray and tell the Most High. Every voice that will give me a wrong counsel. Any spirit that oppresses in me. Spirit of greediness, envy that will make me kill what I'm not supposed to kill. Spirit of carelessness that is in me. I rebuke it out of my life. I rebuke it out of the life of my family. Can somebody pray and tell God very quickly? Oh God, every spirit, every spirit of Gehazi that will make me to lose what I'm not supposed to lose. Oh God, I stand today before your altar. Oh God, break that chain. Break that addiction that will make me to lose. Hey God. Where is gonna go? No To draw, 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 draw from you again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Do you understand where some of your problem came from? You allowed it to die. He gave you a good man. You allowed him to die. He gave you a good wife. You allowed him to die. He gave you a good friend. You allowed him to die. He gave you a good business. You allowed it to die. I pray for somebody this morning. As you stand on this consecrated ground this morning. Whatever is dead in your life. Whatever is dead in your marriage, whatever is dead in your academic life, whatever is dead on business grounds, I command it to come back to life in the name of Jesus. By the reason of the resurrected Jesus, whatever is dead should come back to life. Let it 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 come back to life. In the name of Jesus. You must study. 
She did not learn the habit of sleeping with a child on the same bed. So, she slept on the child and the child died. I don't know what you don't know how to handle. But let the Holy Ghost begin to teach you. Let the Holy Ghost begin to teach you. Let the Holy Ghost teach you. How to handle your marriage, may the Holy Ghost teach you. How to handle your business, may the Holy Ghost teach you. May God send people to teach you. May God send people to teach you. Wherever the knowledge of handling whatever you are handling right now is, may God locate you to that place. In the name of Jesus. Do you understand what we are saying? She laid on the child and the child died. It's time to stop blaming others when he died and say, God, I came for resurrection. I pray for somebody today. May the God of heaven that has given you whatever you are handling right now, let that God protect it. Let the same God handle it for you. In the name of Jesus. So the Shunammite woman, when the child died, she did not hurry to bury it. She did not go to a neighbor to kill the, the, the a neighbor's child. She ran to the prophet and said, my child is dead. And he said, wait. He came and brought back the child to life. Life situation must have made you to make choices to kill things you were not supposed to kill. But I pray for you today. May God restore you. May God bring you back. May God help you. In the name of Jesus. I pray again for you today. May the same grace that has been working in my life. May that grace work for you. You see, you may not understand. We stand on grounds that people expect us to fail. They await bad news, but heaven has been faithful. Heaven has been merciful. May that message speak for you. May that message speak for your generations. Let the message speak for your children. Wherever you turn to, you will find a helper. Wherever you go to, you will find a helper. From this week, let doors begin to open again. From this week, let opportunities begin to give it, be given to you. From this week, may you begin to find opportunities. From this week, wherever you turn to, you will see opportunities. You will grow with grace. You will find people that will help you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Christ is my rock, my refuge, my stronghold. Are you sure? Famous the true truth that closes the land. He who has faith. He who has faith. Oh, he leads us glory. Let's lift up your offerings and let us pray. Whatever sacrifice you have brought today, may it provoke the mercy of God. With a clean heart that you brought this sacrifice to Him, may God redirect whatever has been shut down. May God wake it up again. And may Almighty God bless it, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Otoguwe, Otoguwe, Otogu Otoguwe, Chine Memo, Otogu Iya Imele Mo, Kanje Tsuki, Otogu Ora Iroro Mo, Ya Kanje Tsuki, Otogu Moko Mane Wo Otoguwe, Otoguwe, Otoguwe Chika Nimiya, Otoguwe, Chine Memo, Otogu Ora 
Jesus. Are you blessed? Are you getting blessed? That is why when you are getting blessed, don't come alone. Bring your child. Don't let them sleep at home. Because the prayer they will say out of their mouth is more stronger than the one you think you are praying for them. Because when they understand the message of life, they will, you, your work has reduced, they will move ahead. There are people that are dying in our neighborhood. They don't have anybody to talk to them. Drag them to the presence of God. Share the links. Help people to have life. Somebody called me from Ghana. We were speaking to somebody from Ghana yesterday. And it was a friend that shared our prayer link. And she said, Father, that helped me for all the crises I've been going through. There's somebody somewhere that needs a message of life. Keep dragging them and let's expand the kingdom. Our books are still available. You get them. Those in Portacot, your books have arrived. You contact me, I will let you know. Lift up your sacramentals, please. Just be on your feet. I, uh, Eternal Father, we ask you to bless this salt and water. Bless the, wherever it has been sprinkled, let it drive away the forces of darkness and bring forth your blessings. May this salt and water be exercised. And through the mixture of this salt and water, may this water be made holy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless all sacramentals that are here. The Bible, the rosary, the mustard seed. We ask you, Lord, to hear the prayers of all those who call upon you using these sacramentals. May Almighty God bless them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As you go, may God go with you. You will return with praise. You will return with thanksgiving. You will return with joy. The same way he has protected me, he will protect you. The same way he has helped me, he will help you. And may Almighty God bless this week for you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See you next week. 
Even when I fall your hand, you still hold my hand. Lover of my soul, you do the my heart. I see. 